A very common question I get is, what can I do if I've got small feet and I struggle to reach the brake? Now, when you're using the brake, you ideally want your heel on the floor. This helps you keep your foot steady as the car goes over uneven surfaces, and it also helps you increase braking pressure gradually. If you've got very small feet and you try to keep your heel on the floor, something like this happens. You press the brake and, well, your foot slips off the brake. So what happens is, is you end up lifting your heel up and when your heel's up and you're driving on uneven surfaces, your pedal can be moving up and down even though you don't want it to be. So you can be braking more or less when you don't want to. And not only that, when it comes to adding a little bit more brake pressure, it's very hard to increase it gradually. If your heel's in the air, you end up adding too much suddenly and sort of braking in a very lumpy, jerky fashion. So how do you get around this? I do actually have a solution to this problem and I'm very happy that I've stumbled across this solution because it's been a problem for quite a long time but I do feel a little bit silly that I haven't figured out this solution earlier. You see, what I tend to do is I tend to recommend shoes like this to my customers because they have a thin sole and a smooth sole which means that when they press the brake they can feel the brake or whatever pedal they're using and the pedal doesn't get stuck in the grooves. And my customer turned up with shoes like this. And I thought, well, the lesson's gonna be doable, but it's gonna be harder for her because she's not gonna be able to feel the pedals. Now, this particular customer doesn't actually have small feet and she doesn't struggle to reach the brake. But I noticed that this thick, fat, chunky bit of the sole sticking out the back of the shoe was lifting her foot up higher and that made me think of another customer that I have at the moment who really struggles with a brake because her feet are too small. When she tries to press the brake with her heel on the floor her foot slips off the bottom of the brake pedal as you can see here. If she wants to get good foot placement over that pedal she has to lift her foot up in the air with her heel off the floor meaning she's unstable. And I thought, aha, why don't I recommend some shoes like this to that customer? And I did. And look at this before and after. So this is the before with her, with the shoes she was using before, slipping off the bottom of the pedal. And this is the after, simply changing her footwear. Made a massive difference. And it solved, not straight away, within about half an hour, her braking was brilliant. And that just goes to show how important it is to keep an open mind when you're trying to learn to drive. Don't listen to hard and fast rules. My hard and fast rule has always been thin sole, smooth sole. That's the way to go. But I could have been helping more customers sooner by seeing they've got smaller feet and going, wear some bigger shoes. You know, maybe even stilettos might help some people. I'm not, I'm not gonna go that far yet. But you know, you never know, that could. Um, but I don't think that could be recommended. I don't think I could recommend that on a video because some people will probably say I'm dangerous. Well, I hope this video helps, particularly if you've been struggling to reach the brake pedal. If you think the video does help, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get my future videos. I want to mention Collingwood and Confuse.com. Collingwood are great if you're learning to drive and want to insure yourself on a friend or family member's car because you can do so without affecting their insurance policy. You're insuring yourself on their car with your own policy. So you don't affect their no claims bonus if something was to go wrong. And that takes away some of the stress between pupil and supervisor when someone's supervising you to learn to drive. At the moment via the link, there's up to 35% off and a 20 pound Amazon gift card. Using the link does support this channel. There's also long-term policies and short-term policies available. If you opt for a long-term policy, you can cancel it before it's finished and get a pro rata refund. So it may be worth checking out what is the cheapest route. If you want to compare many insurers, check out the link to confused.com. Confused, compare many insurers and allow you to tailor the quote. So you can do a quote and then you can decide I'm going to add Auntie Anne or take Auntie Anne off and see how that affects the policy. See if it goes up or down. I'm going to increase the excess, decrease the excess without having to re-quote re -quote, re all the time, spending loads of time. It's a great way of finding out 
what's the best, cheapest policy for you that you can get. Using the link does support this channel, so thank you very much. Until the next video, cheerio.